If we look at treating this joint now, um, this is very similar to the knee in that we have three positions. In the mid position, we have the glides, but no conjunct rotation to speak of. At the ends of ranges, towards the ends of ranges, we have the glide plus a conjunct rotation. And at the extreme of range, we have a, um, a hinge in movement again. Now, that hinge in movement and the extremes of range can be assessed with quadrants. And in the quadrants, as you would expect, we have four quadrants. There are two flexion. Now, the first flexion quadrant is flexion, pronation, and adduction, like so. And the other flexion quadrant is flexion, supination, and abduction. So you're leading with your thumb all of the time. And this is easy enough to do, because if you go the wrong way, then you get no real end fill. So just to repeat this, it's pronation, flexion, adduction, flexion, supination, abduction. For the extension quadrants, we'll bring the arm down into the extended position, and it's extension, pronation, and abduction, and extension, supination, and adduction. So we're looking for the normal ovoids, and this is where you'll pick up the extreme of range limitations and also the ab and adduction restrictions at the ulnohumeral joint. And the quadrants, again, can be used to uh, treat these joints. But we'll look first at the mid-range technique. Now, for acute pain, we can apply traction. And if we leave the um, elbow in its rest position here, and we'll put a hand on the ulna, the other one on the overcoming over the top of that hand, and then we simply lean away, gently lean away, and we take the ulna um, inferiorly in line with the humerus and also slightly backwards. So it's an oblique glide like so. And this will traction most of the joint surface. The problem that you've got, of course, is that these are very congruent joint surfaces and consequently you can't traction it simultaneously, all of the joint surfaces simultaneously. But that particular oblique direction will give you most of it. To test, to treat rather in the mid-range, um, very, very similar to the testing positions, stabilize, grab the ulna again, and we will simply glide it forwards and rock forwards for flexion, glide it backwards and rock backwards for extension in the mid-range. And you would grade these depending on whether you're treating for pain or for stiffness. For the ends of range, we'll have to accommodate this with the conjunct rotation. So if we look at flexion, we can flex the arm to the barrier, supinate it for the conjunct rotation, and then do the hold relax technique to get it into that range. And then I shall hold onto the olecranon with my finger around the back of the olecranon again there. And with the arm supinated and the upper arm stabilized, I can then pull this into an anterior glide while it's supinated or laterally rotated, like so. For extension, I'll take the arm into the extended barrier, supinate now, there, come onto the ulna with my hand, stabilize the upper arm, and then I can glide by pushing the humerus backwards and slightly up and rocking to produce that posterior glide for extension. For the extremes of range, in this position, we can come out and simply rock the, the bone into extension and rock the bone into flexion. Now, we do have to be concerned with the medial and lateral glides here as well. And we will mobilize these again simply by stabilizing the arm on the bed. Can you move across a bit for me, Nora? So we'll have the arm out in this position. If the patient can't laterally rotate the shoulder sufficiently, then we can just roll the patient towards us, which will take some of the stress off of the shoulder in that position. Okay, but Nora's in fairly good shape, so we're all right. Stabilizing the arm on the bed, use a sandbag if you need to. The elbow should be in its rest position again. And for the 
lateral glide, I'll come onto the medial side of the ulna and very close into the joint and then simply glide this laterally, like so. And for the medial glide, I'll medially rotate her arm so that the medial epicondyle is down now, keep the elbow in its resting position again, and this time I have to come through the radius to glide the arm medially to produce abduction. Okay, so that'll take care of most of the problems you're going to come across that you can use mobilization for. Of course, there, there are some conditions that need manipulation. We have loose bodies where we have to do manipulation techniques, but these will be shown on another tape of more advanced techniques.